Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode from the Luthier's Workbench. And as you can see, I am standing here in front of my yellow uh, Highline CNC routing machine, which means another update on this project. However, I think that this will probably be the last update uh, for the foreseeable future. And the reason is the machine is done. So, um, there really isn't much else to update on. Uh, there may be some things down the, down the road, who knows. But for now, the machine is done and it's working. So before I jump into that though, I do want to apologize for the audio in this video. Um, I've got a new camera that I'm using to shoot my video and my old lapel microphone doesn't work with this camera. So I have to get a new microphone and that could be uh, a while before that gets here. So I'll try to make this audio sound decent in editing. But typically when you do that and you try to bring it up, it, um, it doesn't sound all that great. So for that, I, I do apologize. So where do things stand at the moment with the CNC machine? Well, in the last update, I was talking about the electronics, which I have down here below. And I have managed to get everything wired up. Uh, I did all kinds of testing over a period of a day or two. And then I got to a point where I thought, no more testing. <laughs> Let's carve something. So I grabbed a flamed maple neck blank, bolted it down to the spoil board, waste board, and I carved a neck. And I've got to say, I am extremely delighted with how well this machine performed. It, it did everything that I had hoped it would do. And none of the things that I hoped it, it wouldn't do. So uh, I'm really happy with how well the machine performed. But there were a couple of issues that I had to resolve, which I did so during the testing phase. And I'll kind of give you a, a brief explanation of what those were. In the last episode, you may remember, I was talking about how I was going to use the Arduino Uno with a DB25 CNC adapter shield attached to the top of it. And this would plug into a standard DB25-1205 parallel port breakout board and it would be connected via a parallel port cable and then I would be able to connect my laptop to the Arduino with just a standard USB cable. The uh, uh, parallel port breakout board would then in turn be wired to the stepper drivers which are in turn wired to the stepper motors. Well once I had everything wired up together I couldn't get anything to work. I had I had power to everything, but I simply couldn't get the stepper motors to run as expected. And that was kind of frustrating. I, I tried everything I could think of, and I even talked to the guy who makes the, uh, the DB25 CNC shield, and nothing that we could figure out seemed to solve the problem. And uh, what I came to the conclusion was that the way that this board is pinned out may not match the pinout of the parallel port breakout board. So uh, that could cause a few minor issues that in turn would prevent the machine from working at all. So what I decided to do, there was really no way I could test this because I didn't have a parallel port connection on my computer, so I couldn't just bypass this and, and connect directly. So what I decided to do was to wire my stepper drivers directly into the Arduino Uno without the shield. Instead, I would get a prototyping screw shield and then just wire the drivers directly into it. And while doing that, I also noticed that the way in which I had the stepper drivers wired was a little bit, uh, it was correct according to the manufacturer's uh, schematic that they sent me, 
But I found other folks um, who had posted YouTube videos showing how they had wired it differently. So I thought, I've got nothing to lose. I'm just going to go ahead and try one of these alternative wiring scenarios. So I changed the way the stepper drivers were wired, and I wired them directly into the Arduino Uno, and it worked. And it worked perfectly. So I realized, okay, um, instead of using a shield connected to the breakout board, I'm just going to use the Uno as my breakout board. And that worked perfectly. And once I had everything wired, um, I'm using Gerbil 1.1 which is a free open source motion control software. It's installed directly on the chip on the Arduino Uno. And I use that to control the uh, steppers, stepper drivers and stepper motors. So and when you install that, you're installing a default installation. So what you have to do is you have to access the settings for Gerbil uh, via your computer and usually a uh, program like Universal G-Code Center. And then you can access the settings and tweak those and modify them to reflect the design of your CNC machine. And it's really pretty simple. There's only a few settings that you necessarily have to mess with. And I played around with them for a while in order to optimize the performance of the machine. And that uh, very quickly uh, helped me to realize uh, the full potential of the machine. So once I had those settings done, then I was able to go ahead and carve my guitar neck. And I am, to say the least, delighted with how well it performed. The, the G-code that I used to carve the neck is the same G-code that I've been using for the past couple of years with my Inventables x carve. I decided that I would use that G-code just as a way to kind of get a a sensory feel between how this machine works and how the Inventables x car works. And I have to say, this machine has lived up to everything that I was hoping it would, it would live up to. It has all the strength, the stiffness, and the rigidity that I need to cut uh, maple and any other hardwood like a hot knife through butter. And what I am encouraged by is I believe that I can go back in and modify my G-code uh, for a, a slightly higher feed rate, but a dramatically higher depth of cut and step over. And that's really what I'm hoping to, to accomplish. I probably always use around uh, 80 to 100 inches per minute when I'm carving hardwoods, but I wanted to increase my depth of cut from about a sixteenth of an inch to about an eighth of an inch. And I don't see any reason why I'm not going to be able to do that. So that's the plan. And that should dramatically decrease the amount of time it takes to make a guitar neck. Um, just as an example, this neck uh, from a blank took an hour and a half. Well, let's say closer to, uh, right around two hours to do all the machining work on it. And that includes V-carving my Highline Custom Guitars logo in the headstock. So that's pretty good in my opinion. Uh, and I'm really happy with how that uh, proceeded. And, and I'm really encouraged. And I know this may sound somewhat dramatic, but um, I consider designing and building this machine and then watching it carve this neck to be one of the great accomplishments in my life. I mean, this to me, this was a big, big project. It was complicated. It was hard to do. And the end result is a total success. So that's going right up there with uh, getting married, raising a child, finishing three Ironman triathlons, and running nine marathons. So <laughs> that's kind of where that slots in. So during the process of building this machine and posting update videos, I have had a number of questions uh, that have come up about the machine's design. And uh, one of the questions that came up last week was, have I had any problems with um, false triggers to the limit switches? That seems to be a fairly common problem. And I'm guessing it's common with uh, machines that are using the Arduino Uno. 
And I haven't had any problems. And the reason I think that I've managed to avoid that is because I do a lot of research on grounding all the electronics. And based on my experience with the uh, Inventables X Carve, I learned that grounding is absolutely critical. Everything has to be grounded properly because if uh, electronics aren't grounded properly, they emit electromagnetic interference, which can cause unexpected and undesirable behavior in a CNC machine. CNC machines are sending a lot of, an enormous number of pulse signals through the wiring. And if that, those pulse signals get corrupted, you know, the machine isn't going to uh, uh, perform as expected. And in fact, it can just shut down in the middle of a car. So I did a lot of research on grounding, and I learned quite a few things about um, grounding the electronics in a CNC machine, as well as grounding the electronics that are connected to the Arduino Uno boards. And I, uh, without getting into too much detail, I created a grounding uh, schematic scenario that I think works pretty well. And it's also important to understand that all the wiring, the critical wiring that carries signals, is um, grounded shielded wiring so uh, I don't have to worry too much about um, interference getting into this wiring and causing problems so uh, I just made sure to use that um, I used two conductor and four conductor shielded wiring and then made sure that the shielding itself is grounded to earth and that seems to be um, helping out quite a bit in fact when I was using my X car I, I had this problem that popped up all of a sudden, unexpectedly, and it was the machine would just stop midway through a carb and I couldn't figure out why. Well, after doing a lot of troubleshooting, I found out it was one of my overhead incandescent or fluorescent light fixtures. And f fluorescent light fixtures are notorious for putting out a lot of interference if they aren't grounded properly. So I fixed the grounding and the problem went away. So that, that just kind of goes to show that not only do you have to have all your electronics connected that are directly connected to your machine grounded properly, anything drawing power in the room where you're working that's close to the machine has to be grounded properly because that uh, interference is going to play havoc with the machine. So I got that taken care of. Another question which has come up, and it's actually, I've gotten a lot of comments, especially on Facebook, on the Highline Guitars Facebook page, is do I plan to offer plans for this machine? And the answer is yes, I hope to. Uh, right now I am working on a, an instruction manual, so to speak. And it's a, a detailed manual illustrated that shows the entire assembly process of the mechanical structure of the machine. I'm also going to include instructions for making the table that the machine is sitting on. And I'm going to also include a wiring schematic that will be um, based on how I wire my machine. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can wire these machines, but I'm going to include the way that I did it. And I'm, um, I'm going to stipulate that you know this is just one method, and I'm no expert on wiring this stuff, but this is what's worked for me and, and uh, one that you can consider. And I'm going to try to, to design it to be easy to read. Um, and it's important to remember that, you know, when it comes to wiring this stuff, you're on your own as far as doing it correctly. You know, if you're confident that you can solder and wire electronics, go for it. But if you have the slightest concern that you may be getting in a little over your head, have a qualified, licensed, bonded, insured electrician do it for you. And that will uh, potentially save you in the long run. So uh, I'm going to have to put that in the, as a disclaimer when I do those plans. Uh, there also will be a cut plan for all the parts which have to be cut out and drilled. And um, that will be set up on a couple of sheets uh, to represent, um, in this case I used 18 millimeter, 13 ply, Baltic birch plywood. So I'll include that as well. Now originally when I designed this machine, my plan was once it was completed, I would actually use the machine to cut new plates 
out of half and quarter inch thick aluminum. But after cutting this neck out, I don't see any reason to do that. I, I, I think it would just be uh, an exercise in busy work, and I can't stand doing busy work. That doesn't have, serve any purpose. So for the time being, I'm just going to leave the machine as is. You know, maybe down the road I might switch out, but for now I don't see any point in doing that. So um, I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in this update. And I will probably get back to building guitars. I'm actually going to be working on a really cool design. That's uh, this neck is going to be used in it. It's going to be a double cutaway, uh, probably based on my Apollyon uh, guitar body. And, or it may be a single cutaway, I haven't decided for sure. But I'm going to put graphics on the front of it that are vintage science fiction magazine covers. So that should be pretty cool. And I'll uh, be sure to cover that in updates and, and my quick tips. So in closing, uh, I encourage you, of course, to hit like, to hit subscribe. That way you can uh, get updates every time I post a new video. And, you know, each week I've been posting my, uh, from the Luthiers workbench videos like this one, as well as my weekly quick tips. And I posted one on Wednesday, which was um, about how to make your own notched uh, straight edge for checking the, um, how lovely your neck and fretboard are. So, um, and there'll be more of those coming up as well. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's have fun building guitars together. We'll we'll see you soon.